I feel a great sense of disappointment, but I also feel a sense of achievement that constitutionally we've made the change and there is no going back. I'm joined by David Davis. No, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. He's now Sir David <laughs> Davis. We have to get that right. <laughs> Member of Parliament for the Conservative Party, or what's left of it, for Horton Price and Howdham, and of course the former Brexit Secretary, and Mike Goldsworthy, Chair of the European Movement UK and founder of Scientists for EU. David, you were out there on the road, mm -hmm. passionate uh, mm. believer that Brexit was the right thing to do. Um, do you understand the disappointment many people feel? Yeah, but also I think a lot of it's based on just non-stop propaganda. I mean, put aside immigration for a second. All yeah. the other things we were told. I mean, you and I were fighting against, oh yeah, you're going to have a million more unemployed. Mm. Oh no, 150,000 fewer unemployed. You're going to have no exports to Europe. Actually, they've grown by 14%. You're going to have no exports generally. Well, got the service exports gone up by 17%, all-time record. Your growth rate's going to be crushed. Actually, we're doing better than Germany and Italy and France. So on the, all the things that those were talking about, then uh, the, 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 most of the, oppo the opponents are talking about, we're right, they're wrong. And that's despite the fact, remember, I resigned as Brexit secretary because, because I thought Theresa May was not doing it properly, indeed, Today's stuff on Northern Ireland is sort of the rescue of, of, of what she got wrong. So even though we didn't do it brilliantly, uh, which I, is my view, actually it's turned out not bad at all. I agree with you, David. You yeah. look at the GDP figures, etc. Mm. It's not been a disaster. However, you know, there are five and a half million men and women out mm. there running small businesses. Mm. They really expected regulations would ease, they'd be freer to run their lives. Mm. They haven't been, have they? Well, that's going to take time, um, to be frank. I mean, how, how, well, nearly, you know, how long ago did we vote to leave? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, but the, but the, 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 the look, regulations take, take time to move. I mean, they're, they're not going to change dramatically overnight, but we've got the right, I mean, frankly, to put it bluntly, we've got the right to make our own mistakes. Yes. Yeah, and what you talked about earlier, to yes. some extent, it probably us making yeah, our no, own no, mistakes. No, no. I, and David, at least we can fire the David, people who do it. I always argued in the referendum it yeah. gave us the right to mismanage our own future, not have it done by somebody else. Mike Goldsworthy, what was interesting in the referendum was people like David Davis and I were arguing, look, you know, we can be self-governing, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, we'll have a bigger place in the world, etc. We didn't actually spend much time in the referendum saying how awful Brussels was. We'd done that perhaps in the years before. What was interesting about the Remain campaign, it was all, and, and David's alluded to this, it was all, you're going to be poorer, you're going to be broke, uh, you could catch infectious diseases because medicines won't come in, I mean, all this stuff. At no point did I ever hear a senior figure in the Remain campaign lay out a vision of what was good about the European Union. And I want to ask you now, you know, we're four years on, we've left. You guys would like us to rejoin. I mean, for example, last week we saw a senior figure, the leader of the EPP group, the biggest political group, saying he wanted the European Union to have its own nuclear weapons. What kind of European Union? What's your vision for the European Union? Is it this big United States of Europe? No, because the United States of Europe would then be a country like that. That, that wouldn't make sense. And that's not what the countries want. Um, and I certainly take your point about the Britain Stronger in Europe campaign. They, they were hopeless. Um, and it, it was completely <laughs> missing any inspirational vision for any sector of the economy or, or any demographic in it. it. It did my head in from scientists for you because in science we can tell all the nice stories about collaboration, what we did and how that provides added value. And I was saying to them, we need to run with this. Mm. And they told me, no, we're, we're just doing economic threat. You do economic threat too. And we just want to get it over the line. And that's our job done. Now, I know where this comes from, um, because one of the advisors to, to Cameron back in 2015, um, uh, Peter Wilding, said, we need to talk about we need to talk about leading in Europe. We haven't really done that properly. We've sort of been grumbling about it, but there are things where we can really lead. And David Cameron said to him, no, um, I won Scotland on economic threat. I've just got back into power on economic threat. It's what works. We're going with the economic threat. Negative, negative, negative. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and furthermore, and furthermore, he had no time to build up a positive case because he decided that he was just going to do it in about a four month dash. And the reason why, and I got this actually from, from Alan Johnson of the, of the Labour Remain campaign. He was the first one who told me. Mm. And I said, but he said that, you know, he would have a referendum before the end of 2017. 
why is he rushing it now? And he said two reasons. One, he thinks that the Leave campaign is split between um, Leave.eu yeah. and Vote Leave, and so he thinks that he can catch them in chaos. And secondly, he wants to have it before the summer, because if you remember in 2015, when you had the migrant crisis across the channel, he didn't want that, and he wanted to get the vote done before that. Well, so fact, basically, he just rushed it and put out no in, vision. In fact, and the, he migrant crisis, for it. the migrant crisis then was the Mediterranean, to be fair, not yes. the China. But you, know, you say, we don't want a country, we want to cooperate, you do so yes. as a scientist. But, so why have they got a flag? Why have they got an anthem? Why do they want nuclear weapons? Absolutely. Their own independent, question their own about, independent yeah, nuclear yeah, weapons. Yeah. This is a great question about the flag and anthem, and I would like to demand the same of Liverpool FC. What do they think they're doing with their own flag and their own <laughs> well, anthem? Well, do, do they, they think they are? Do you know That's what? ridiculous. Well, yeah. They're trying to take well, over the world. But their law, law, lots of people have different law, flags and anthems. Their law is not superior over Manchester, and that's the point. <laughs> yeah, but also with the flag. <laughs> they're, they're football, the flag, everyone, <laughs> everyone, <laughs> says, yes. everyone says it's the EU flag. It's not. It was... It was Put together in 1955, you know, in the whole surge of passion My, that came out I have of stood in the European Winston Parliament. Churchill and others, I've and it was stood, adopted. Par- I've like, stood in the European Parliament with them all standing ramrod to attention. Yep. I've, I was there during the Constitutional Convention 20 years ago. They are building a state, a global superpower. Why should we rejoin no. it? It's not because you're listen. in denial. You see, you're in denial. Even now, when I give you the chance. To give me the positive vision for why we should oh, reach right, no, I'll give you the positive state. vision, but this, I'm not going to accept just, that it's going to become one country. Just, country yeah, because because to, to the nation states are still in control. Two points. I mean, one point, I mean, w- yeah. one point on, on the, the, the flag and the, and the anthem. I was there in Taumina when they first introduced it. I mean, I committed a solecism by refusing to stand up. Good for you. I thought I could be thrown out the Foreign Office. But, but you know, the other thing I say to you, Mike, is, you know, uh, it, what a tragedy that actually it wasn't positive vision versus positive mm. vision. Mm. Because once you totally. start a negative attack, we had to defend against the negative yeah. attack. You know, it would be brilliant to say that this is what the alternative futures of Britain are. Totally. And this is also where I think the BBC let us down hugely. And you're probably not going to like this, but all I saw on the BBC was old white conservative males for leave versus old white conservative males for remain. I thought when I started scientists You're not for that you pretty Patel. There were data done it as well. There were stats done about who were the dominant talking I heads during think. that period. I but don't but think. no but you, you want positive vision. This is yeah. what I'd hoped that the the referendum campaign was going to be you get farmers in a room and they talk about farming, what's important to farming, and whether being in the EU outside of it would be advantageous to them from a community perspective. Similarly with fishing, similarly with tech, similarly with science, that's what I thought it was going to be like. That you really, you know, go into the country, you interrogate different communities about what's working for them, what's not. Is immigration bad for them or well, good for them? Well, my, my ultimately, the ultimately, ultimately, good for them or ultimately, bad for them? what's interesting is this. London London said, we must remain. The country said, we must leave. We've left. We're four years on. Do you accept we're not rejoining? No, we are going to go back and How? again. When? For sure. Well, look at the demographics. I mean, right now, if you take polling about whether people want to rejoin mm. or want to stay out, mm. it's pretty solid. 60% for joining again, 40% for staying out. Don't interrupt me here because here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. You break that down by age. Yeah. And you see that big millennial wave coming in. I'm sorry, boomer no, guys, no, but they view no, no, my, our UK EU relationship it very is differently. It's fascinating because Marine Le Pen is now leading in the under 30s. Yep. The AFD are leading in the under 30s. Yep. Georgia Maloney's support is young, and, not middle aged, and, and old. Stuff. And I, well, I do a bit of TikTok. I don't do any harm. Really is I'm glad right, I haven't come across that. Yet. Right across <laughs> Europe, it's the youth right across Europe who are saying, we don't want this vision, we don't want these old unelected people in Brussels running our lives. Actually, it's the youth. And the whole European structure is falling apart. They're arguing like cats and dogs You've over migration. You've been saying it's, this for decades. And now Any day now, it's going to fall apart. Any yeah, day, it's happening. this politician, oh, it's going to fall it's apart happening. tomorrow. <laughs> but it's not. It's actually more robust than ever. And actually, thanks to you and thanks to Brexit, you, you actually saw chaos in the EU from 2008 onwards because of the Euro crisis, because of the immigration crisis across the Mediterranean. And they were at sixes and sevens. But when they had to negotiate against the UK, there was incredible 
cohesiveness that come then. Amongst, gov I amongst governments, it, Mike, yeah. yes. But the point I'm making is there's a younger generation in Europe viewing this in a very different way. They have no memory of the Second World War. They don't see it as a project for peace, as perhaps their parents and grandparents did. The they Labour Party, do see it as the a Labour project Party, for opportunity, for the Labour jobs, Party for exchanges, for working together on climate change. You can do all of that without a political union. The Labour no, but Party you can do it may better mirror, when you're working as a better team. The Labour Party may mirror EU rules, and some could argue the Tory Party have not diverged enough mm. from them. There's no prospect of Starmer taking us back into the EU, is there? No, not, not with Starmer. Well, certainly not in the first term. But at the moment, but, but Starmer my... has no interest in that debate because... He is trying to take the heat out of all of it. And basically, he wants to focus on, quite frankly, David, that the mess that the Conservatives have made across the country in lots of dimensions. There was austerity, then Brexit, then COVID. And well, all three have been I mismanaged. Don't, I, don't think, I don't think we're so His on, priority on. is to come <laughs> in and say, I'm <laughs> in a safe Mike, pair of hands to tidy the cell. Oh, Mike, yeah. Starmer won't take us out. Uh, it's done, David, isn't it? We've left. It's not, it's not well, going to be Look, I mean, Starmer does take, I mean, two things. But firstly, your cohort you're talking about uh, grew up with all these fearsome threats. You know, you're going to lose your jobs. There'll be no, no future in science, for example. All that. It's turning out well, to be Who said that? <laughs> Who has said that? Osborne, there's no future. Cameron, yeah, they, no, they didn't yeah. say there's they no future they, in they, science. They, 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 no, no, I was they, leaving they, scientists they, they, for a year. Hang on, yeah. David, 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 last word to David let, Davis let, let, on this. But, the, but so that's going to change. And, 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 and what we're saying, what you're saying, yeah. is it's not going to happen in 10 years. In 10 years, they're going to learn what freedom feels like. And that's actually going to be good, irrespective of the government. Yeah. Doesn't matter which government, they're going to have to make their own decisions, their own mistakes sometimes. Yeah. But what will happen over that time is they'll realise there's nothing to fear outside and everything to gain. And that's what we're playing for. Right, well, there we are. That's the end of our debate. Four years on from Brexit night, I have to say, we're not going to rejoin. I'm still disappointed we haven't broken away further.